Now I've never done a full Llama lab test on the Tax Neo Train, not using the protocol that I'm currently using for all the other trainers. Yesterday while collecting data with another power meter, I had three power meters lined up, but the two that really, really impressed me, and I was happy to see this with the PowerTap P1 pedals matching almost one for one very closely to the Tax Neo. These are the two units that I use as my current standard for testing other units. So indoors, I'll compare a power meter to the Tax Neo. Outdoors, I'll compare other power meters to the PowerTap P1 pedals. Now, this isn't to say other trainers aren't as accurate and other power meters outdoors aren't as accurate or reliable, but it's just the ones that I use. So I thought today, I'll just dive into the data with you guys and have a look at why I choose these two and why I trust them at this point in time. Yesterday's scenario was the Tax Neo Smart Trainer hooked up to the Garmin Edge 800. The PowerTap P1 pedals hooked up to the Element Bolt, and I also had a Watt Team Power Beaten single side hooked up to another power meter, but that's for another video. Today we're looking at the first two head to head. Okay, flipping over here to one of my favorite sites on the internet, DC Runmaker's Analysis Tool. I'll link below to the how-to guide on this and how you can get access if you want to dive into some details on your equipment. But for now, my standard protocol there, 10 minutes of just riding along, just riding along. After 10 minutes, I unclip, unpair, zero offset everything, calibrate some companies call it, but we just zero the offset, make sure everything's reading. And then I'm into my first 20 minute of erg mode, split into two halves, 10 minutes at 200 watts, 10 minutes at 220 watts. So let's dive in here with the PowerTap P1 up against the Tax Neo. It's a beautiful thing and this is exactly why I use these two products and I have confidence in both of them. So after clipping in and, I mean it's a little tiny gap there once I clip in, but once I get riding, kick in up to speed for erg mode, they track along almost one for one so closely, brings a tear to the eye. It's, uh, it's really good to see. And then I flip up after 10 minutes or so to 220 watts. See the little, little dip and little spike here? I actually had a table in front of me and I adjusted the height of the table and that's it. Both power meters, so the Tax Neo and the P1s detecting that as I leant forward and pulled up and put different pressure on the pedals, detected that straight away. So after the 20 minute test, that was one for one watts. Super happy with what I'm seeing there. Into the two sprints that I do, it's hard to get maximal peak power sprinting indoors. You can't really wind it up and get on top of a gear. You just sort of mash into it and hold the gear. So what I've got here, two sprints. The first one, almost one for one as well. So they're around 10 second sprints, these sprints. Peak power there of uh, 10, 16 watts on the pedals and 10, 13 on the Neo. Super, super close. The next one, there's a slight bit of separation there by about a second. Now the recording intervals of these can be within one second. So it's a little bit of shadowing, I call it there of the power, but one second out and the peak power is within seven or eight watts. That's just really good to see. Sorry, this is a bit of a love fest for these two power meters that I'm using, but I just wanted to talk about why I use these tools and the data that I'm seeing here. Into my erg mode test, now this is 150, 350, 150, 350, 150, 450, 150, 450, 150, 150, if you understand where I'm going with that. There's a little bit of smoothing on this data, that's why you see a few of the curves there. Uh, the Neo is, has no problems at all with erg mode. It just, whatever gear you're in, it just holds that erg mode after the stabilization period. If you're familiar with erg, as soon as you, that change in resistance happens, there's a bit of a stabilization. So 20 seconds is probably about the minimum to stabilize things. A lot of trainers take a few seconds to get you in the right zone. Humans are horrible engines, and these computers that are controlling our erg mode, especially the Neo, is pretty damn good. So it has to accommodate, it has to, uh, I guess, adapt to the human's errors. So anyhow, 150 watts, spot on there. There's a little bit more separation than I thought, just eyeballing the two computers in front of me here. So we have about eight watts, six to eight watts here but it's still tracking perfectly along. Um, same there again, a little bit closer up into the 450 zone. Things get a bit sloppy though at 450, trying to put out those watts nice and smooth, but the 150 is fine. Response time's within one second and still within five, six, five watts there at 450 watts. So super close, super clean. And then into, here's an interesting one, into my one minute at 400 in normal sim mode on Zwift. So there's a few hills, there's a change in gradients. A little bit of separation there as Zwift sort of changes the resistance and I get on top of the gear and it gets a bit messy. And then right there, that indicates it's time for me to change my battery in my right power tap pedal. So there's, it actually dropped out the right pedal. I have more than 60 hours on these current pedals. So lithium battery upgrade coming up this afternoon for those. 
But ignoring that little, uh, little blip there in the data, that's what I'm seeing. And that's why I choose these two products at this point in time. Will I always continue to use these products? Yeah, maybe not, maybe so. But it's what I have at the moment and I've got full faith in what I'm seeing here. And it's very consistent across the other tests that I'm doing as well. Quickly flipping up the stats table here, we see the PowerTap P1 for the session is reporting an average power of 177, the Neo itself 178. Weighted power, 230 versus 231. Max power, probably about a separation of 35 watts there in max power, but um, nothing to be too concerned about there. It gets pretty ugly doing a max sprint indoors. Such short intervals, such really spiky um, pressure on the pedals, I guess. But for the averages, that's really, really good. So all up, I'm super impressed with both of those units being so close, given one's pedal based and one's further down the drivetrain. So super happy with those numbers, confident with the PowerTap P1 pedals indoors and out. I'm confident with the Neo indoors. So whenever I'm comparing other power meters, they're gonna be the baseline for now, seeing that those numbers are pretty damn close. Okay, the Watt Team Powerbeat power meter coming up soon, and I'll try and get a few others as well. I'm looking at the cheaper XKD or XCaddy um, four eye type power meter. Speaking of, I'll try and get a four eye power meter to do the same. One of the new stages, maybe dual left, right. This is the system that I'll be testing against for now. So anyway, happy days. Have a great weekend all. We'll see you soon.